Welcome to German History with a German accent. My name is Wolf, and in this video I'm speaking about Gerd von Rundstedt. Karl Rudolf Gerd von Rundstedt was born on December 12, 1875, and he was a German uh, field marshal. Gerd von Rundstedt was born in Prussian Saxonia, now in Saxonia Anhalt. The Rundstedts are an old Junker family that traced its origins to the 12th century and classed as members of the Uradel, or old nobility, although they held no titles. Most of the Rundstedt served in the Prussian army since Frederick the Great. All of his brothers became officers as well. Rundstedt joined the 83rd Infantry Regiment in March 1892 as a cadet officer. The regiment was based in Kassel in Hasse Castle, which he came to regard as his hometown and where he maintained home until 1945. After three years of war academy in Berlin, he was described as an outstandingly able officer, well suited for the general staff. Rundstedt joined the general staff of the German army in April 1907, serving there until July 1914 when he was appointed Chief of Operations to the 22nd Reserve Infantry Division. In World War I, Rundstedt served as 22nd Division's Chief of Staff during the invasion of Belgium, but he saw no action since his division was held in reserve during the initial advance. In April 1915, after recovering from lung alignment, he was posted as Chief of Staff to the 86th Infantry Division on the Eastern Front. After holding an administrative post as part of the military government of German-occupied Poland, based in Warsaw, he was promoted to the Chief of Staff of an Army Corps, where he saw more action against Russia. After the Eastern Front collapsed following the Russian Revolution, Rundstedt was transferred to Alsace, where he saw the end of the war. He was awarded the Iron Cross First Class and built a reputation as a very able staff officer. He was kept on in the military after World War I. In October 1919, Rundstedt was posted to the staff of Military District 5. He was there when the attempted military coup, known as the Kaputsch, took place in March 1920. Rundstedt, like most of the army leadership, refused to support the coup attempt. Rundstedt later described it as a failure, and a very stupid one at that. It was a reflection of his view that army officers should not interfere in politics and should, should support the government of the day, whatever its nature. A view he was to hold firmly to throughout his career. He was promoted to lieutenant colonel in 1920 and to full colonel in 1923 when he was transferred to Military District 2. In 1926, he was made Chief of Staff to Group Command 2 and promoted to Major General. In January 1932, Rundstedt was appointed Commander of Military District 3, based in Berlin, and also given command of the 3rd Infantry Division, and he was promoted to Lieutenant General. In July 1932, he was named commander of Group Command 1 and promoted to full general. In 1933, Rundstedt met Hitler for the first time when he assured his generals that he didn't plan to interfere within its internal affairs. Rundstedt was satisfied with this, but made it clear in private that he didn't support the Nazis. As a matter of fact, he, together with other senior officers blocked Walter von Reichenau's appointment to Chief of General Staff twice, since Reichenau was known to be a super strong supporter of the Nazis. In 1938, when Nazi Germany planned to occupy Czechoslovakia, high-ranking officers feared the interference of the United Kingdom and France, and therefore plotted to remove Hitler. When they asked Rundstedt to join the plot, he refused, sticking to his idea that the military should not get involved into politics. In November 1938, 
he retired in the rank of Colonel General, which was the second highest rank there was in the Wehrmacht. In May 1939, he was recalled as the commander of the Army Group South that would invade Poland from Slovakia and Slesia. Runcic's armies advanced rapidly into southern Poland. During this campaign, the murder of civilians and prisoners of war started. Gerd von Runcic told his generals that he would not support these actions and complained with the chief of the general staff that other high-ranking officers would tolerate this behavior. After it was reported to him that SS groups were murdering Jews, he banned these groups from operating in the area he commanded. On October 25, 1939, Ronstadt took up his new post as commander of Army Group A, facing the French border in the Adans Mountain sector. Hitler planned to attack France in a similar way like in 1914, through Belgium and the Netherlands. Most senior officers were opposed to both the timing and the plan itself. Ronstadt, Manstein, and Reichenau List and Brauchitsch remonstrated with Hitler in a series of meetings in October and November. They were opposed to an offensive so close to the onset of winter, and they were opposed to launching the main attack through Belgium, where the many rivers and canals would hamper armored operations. A combination of bad weather, the arguments of his general, and the breach of security when the details of the original plan fell into Allied hands, eventually led Hitler to agree to postpone the attack until early 1940. In February of the same year, Hitler approved the Manstein plan to use armored units to break through their dens to the channel to cut off French and British troops from the French motherland. This plan worked out well and led to a rapid advance. Due to high losses of its armored units and the fact that the infantry needed time to catch up to the armored units, Rundstedt agreed to the halt order that gave the Allied enough time to ev evacuate the majority of the British Corps, which would make out the majority of the British invasion army on D-Day. After the remainders of the French army surrendered in June 1940, Rundstedt was promoted to the rank of General Field Marshal and asked to resume his retirement, but was appointed to Commander-in-Chief West by Hitler instead. In preparation of the Soviet campaign, Runcet was named as head of Army Group South, which would march towards Kiev and Stalingrad. Despite of big advancements into Soviet territory and extreme losses by the Soviets, Operation Barbarossa, the code name for the Soviet campaign, did not go as planned. The Wehrmacht faced increasing resistance the further, the further they advanced in Soviet rule. By September 1941, Kiev had fallen into German hands, but Rundstedt's troops were severely weakened and Rundstedt asked to pause further attacks but was denied. During this time, Gerd von Rundstedt's health deteriorated and against better judgment, he followed Hitler's orders to resume attacks during the winter months. After he ordered his troops to retreat in order to avoid encirclement, he was dismissed by Hitler in December 1941. In March 1942, Hitler reappointed Rundstedt as Commander-in-Chief West, and he held this position until 1944 when Allies couldn't be stopped from landing in Normandy. Rundstedt was asked by Wilhelm Keitel what they should do now. He replied, Stop the war, you idiots! Afterwards, he was dismissed as Commander-in-Chief West. In 1944, Rundstedt was also head of the honor court that expelled high-ranking officers from the Wehrmacht that were involved in the assassination attempt against Adolf Hitler on July 20th 1944. He was recalled as Commander-in-Chief West in September 1944, where his troops achieved the last victory at the Western Front at Operation Market Garden in the Netherlands. Their then campaign of 1944 was his last offense move during World War II. 
It resulted in an Allied victory and a severe loss of manpower and fuel, which made proper defense actions harder. On March 9, 1945, Gerd von Rundstedt was dismissed for the last time, after a total of 53 years of service. Gerd von Rundstedt became a British pr prisoner of war in 1945 and was tried in Nuremberg trials, but was not sentenced due to his poor health and old age. On February 24, 1953, Gerd von Rundstedt died in Hanover.